Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today is Supercar Delivery Day. A car that I'm going to be just a little bit envious of later on. Joining my friend Zen Car Driver for something brand new. Now I must confess I'm running a little bit behind time. I need to be brief before hopping into the Vantage GT8 to take it out today. Which means an obnoxiously loud cold start is inbound here at the Schmuseum in the morning with this monster. Now given I'm such a big fan of limited edition cars, things like the GT8, there are only 150 of these and also quite like convertibles like the V8 Vantage Roadster up top I'm slightly wondering why I didn't go for one of these new cars and I know I'm going to be rather jealous of Zen Car Driver's new edition later on but having joined him for collection day of his CLK Black Series having driven his 718 GT4 before I bought mine also his Vantage V600 super rare super limited car this is going to be quite a nice addition to the collection. So I think we need to get this started, drive on over. Along the way, I want to talk a bit more about how you know about these limited cars, how you manage to buy one before they're often even introduced. We'll get to all of that in a moment. And then, of course, it's going to be delivery time of Zen Car Driver's brand new supercar. Given that time is running pretty tight on me, I need to get this unplugged and started. Obviously, we've got the CS1 back here. Pop this open ever so slightly so I can reach in, pull that out. Then obviously hop into the car before we're gonna have a roar of thunder. This thing always sounds truly phenomenal. In fact, we now have, what is it? About 11,000 miles on the Odo. Not bad going. Right, so key in, let's start it. Oh yeah! Ah, uh, the delights of the M25 in the morning, the amount of hours spent sitting here. Although I tell you what, thankfully we are at least flowing. That is very, very, very beneficial. Now today's car, I realise I haven't actually said what exactly we're going to see. So you will find that out soon, I promise. But when it comes to limited edition cars, often you need to be a customer of that brand, obviously, beforehand. You need to be in the know. And when you're doing like I am and spending your entire life around cars, it would come as no surprise that you tend to see the spy shots. You can work it out. You can calculate a little bit what the manufacturers are working on. Like, don't be surprised that we've just had the 992 GT3 RS and down the line, there'll be a 992.2 GT3 RS that comes after a 992.2 GT3, for example. Don't be surprised that when McLaren launched the facelift of the 720s which is coming soon there will be an lt version in coupe and spider form that comes later as well this is kind of what you know same with the sf90 when i bought my sf90 i knew that there would be an sf90 vs a versione speciale which we now know is launching quite soon so that's why i spec'd it in the stradale spec with comfort seats and soft suspension not the assetto fiorano it's a case of kind of taking a logical approach i think a lot of people are surprised after a gt3 that a gt3 rs comes out it's, it doesn't take that much of a genius to work it out. So once you know that, and once you have the relationship with your dealer, you express interest in what you think might be coming. Yes, there are curveballs, but even when there are curveballs, like the Lamborghini Huracan Storato or the Porsche 911 Dakar, there are still spy shots, test cars, talk, forums, rumors in the build-up, and rumors tend to be substantiated. If there is a rumor of a car coming, there tends to be a reason for it. There were rumors of a V8 engine going in the new Ford GT, and those were obviously wrong from the start. This goes back to logic. Logic said Ford had to put an EcoBoost V6 tiny little engine in the tight packaging of the GT. There was no way they were gonna fit a V8 back there, ever. Not, not gonna happen. Doesn't fit the brand, the marketing, the ethos of the car, the race story, nothing about it. So engage some logic, and you could tell that there wasn't, that, that just wasn't gonna be a thing. So it's often about that, and for me, you know, go way back, even when I ordered my original AMG GTR, the GT and the GTS existed, and I didn't know what the next version necessarily would be. Could be a GT Black Series uh, back then, but I actually went into the dealer and said, hey, I think a GTR is coming from the rumors and spy shots I'd seen of something with a wing. Looked a little bit like the SLS Black Series based on the GTS, and said, yeah, put, a, put an order in, you never know. Um, same with the Amira. I ordered the Amira a long time ago, knowing that a new generation Lotus car was coming. It was like, yeah, let's go for it, let's do it. So that's what it often comes down to. You know, in the Ferrari world and the Porsche world, if you're a VIP customer, you're gonna be at the front of the queue for any of those new models that come out, any of the new limited editions. But you can 
as a, an enthusiast, have a bit of an idea of what's coming and I guess increase your chances, if I can say it like that. You know, go way back here. When I had a McLaren 12C, I knew that the 675 LT was coming. I knew that a track version, not an LT and not a 675, I knew that a track version of the 12C was going to come. The 650S had already launched, so it was part of the kind of process in my mind was, I know I would like a 675 LT, let's go buy a 650S, let's make this you know, a conversation with the dealer, let's have that open discussion, and obviously I got a 675 LT, then a 675 LT Spider, same with the Senna. I heard rumours that the next Ultimate Series McLaren after the P1 was going to be very track focused focused, codename P15, I actually sent a letter saying, hey, I'm very interested in a P15, please let me know more when it comes along. So that's how this world really works. <laughs> the guy in front just totally squeezed in with no indicator. Taxi driver, should know better. Anyway, the, um, the process is one that when you know it, you know it and it works. So I have to be honest, I did have the opportunity to buy the car that we're going to see today. In fact, I did also have the opportunity to buy the coupe version. You've probably been able to work out it's a spider from what I said earlier, or a roadster even. So I can't feel too bad because I passed the opportunity initially, but it is cool. And once we've made our way around through this, now a little bit of traffic on the M25, we will get to HWM in Walton on Thames, and we will get to see this new car. I'm not even sure if I've seen one myself up to this point, actually. Doesn't this thing sound ridiculous? Actually, let's drop it to third gear while we're going 50-something miles an hour. <laughs> we'll get there, and we'll see it all in detail. I am not in the remotest bit surprised to tell you that I'm now in a traffic jam. This part of the M25, <laughs> as you head round towards the southwest, is always a bit of a disaster, and today is no exception. Uh, yeah, let's hope this isn't too long. I'm just conscious that I am, as I said, a bit behind when I'm supposed to have arrived. So I thank everybody who is there already for their patience to let me catch up. Fingers crossed I've not been too much of an inconvenience, but thankfully less than half an hour or so to go. It is always better to be late than never. Here we are at HWM Aston Martin Walton on Thames, pulling in then to go find the entire crew, work out where to put this car. Kind of lacking parking spaces. <laughs> And then we'll go and uh, check things out. Parked up here then, and the GT8 is looking fabulous in the beautiful weather today. But we've arrived at HWM Aston Martin Walton on Thames. We're going to be heading in to the delivery room in just a second. But I want to point out there is a Valkyrie under a cover in the showroom there, plus plenty of other very nice cars around. This is Zancar Driver's 765 LT Spider, one of 765 of course, with a very nice paint scheme. We have a Porsche 718 Spider just there, rather a fan of those. AMG GTR behind, Bav, my friend there with the 992 GT3, lots and lots of lovely cars, but let's head straight on in. Straight inside then, and this is the car of the day. You can possibly tell already what we're about to see, but before the covers come back, drawing your attention to this right here. Zen Car Drivers V600, one of seven. I've experienced driving this car, V12 engine, subtle hint, V12 engine, of course, the ultimate, ultimate, you could say, of the old Vantage platform, the last special version from Aston Martin's Q division. So many nods to the old Vantage V600, the openings you can see, the shape of the grill, such a cool thing with the dogleg manual gearbox inside here as well and quite the experience when i was fortunate enough to find myself behind the wheel of this car not all that long ago but we are here of course to see this so let's prepare to have the covers pulled back and reveal the new car i think we should take a very quick sneak peek at the color underneath here look at this anything blue wins in my book right Covers off time. Let's do this then. The full reveal of Zen Car Drivers Aston Martin V12 Vantage Roadster. Limited to 249 cars. This stunning example is finished in Zaffir Blue. You'll see all the chrome and silver accents and trims that it has all around. The diamond turned wheels, of course, being a roadster. Let's have the roof opened. You can see inside the silver stitch to contrast against the black leather to match with those details on the exterior as well. Let me step back just so we can see it rotating around in front of us, matching plates to the V600. 
Look at this, one of only 249, as I said, super rare, super limited, and this car in a very, very elegant specification for the model. This dark or deep royal blue paint, very similar to the cobalt blue of my GT8 with those silver details. You'll notice with all of the gloss black painted sections as well, and not wearing that carbon fiber front bonnet that is also an option, or either the wing that you can opt to have on the rear of the car as well. But in a moment, we're gonna get this started and take it on outside to go join the convoy with all of the cars to head over to a little stop checkpoint, if you will, in just a moment. It is time to pull the cars out. Goodness me, the V600 sounds amazing. That was a throaty startup. Obviously, Aston's famous six liter V12, naturally aspirated V12 in here. Of course, the V12 Vantage of the new generation has the 5.2 liter twin turbo that we know from the DB11, DBS, etc. More powerful, obviously more efficient, but not as raw and brutal as this. That is a completely different level. That sounded amazing. Genuinely, special car. Q badge on the side. <laughs> That sounds awesome. I forgot how good it sounded. And the new car starts up. The exhaust tailpipes are right in the center, down at the bottom. But obviously this will now come outside as well to join the V600. So let me step back out here. Lovely day, actually, with the sun poking through. And look at this car, Zappa Blue, emerging into the daylight. These two are really cool together, like really, really, really cool. It's a huge thanks to Guy from HWM here, who's looked after Zen Car Driver with the purchase of these cars, but also for the help with the video today as well. A quick spontaneous GT8 shoot. So start this one up. I need to turn it around to be facing the other way. So let me see if I can do that here. Carefully does it with a lot of Astons and very nice cars right around me. The thing with this is it's such a heavy, raw, old school type experience. And bang on cue, we now have two GT8s side by side. A few friends have turned up for today, for the delivery day and for the drive out that we're gonna go for in just a moment. Well, I think the advanced party has just left and I don't entirely know which way we're going. Oh, we've got the music there, no, that one. Turn that off for the moment uh, and try and figure out if we can catch up with them. Um, like I say, I don't really know what we're doing, where we're going, how this is going to play out, other than I think it's this way. Well, the good news is that we've managed to catch up with the others. So I am now following the V600 and in front of that is the new V12 Vantage Roadster and I'm in my GT8 and there's another GT8 right behind me. As limited Aston convoys go, short of having a Valkyrie or something involved, this is pretty spectacular. In fact, as Vantage limited edition convoys go, this is as good as you can get. This is literally crazy with the V600 and I enjoy driving that car so much. It's very expensive. It makes on paper very little sense, but there's such an emotional thing behind these cars that on paper you can't really explain. Even this car itself, the fact is it's quite an old school, kind of out of date, not particularly light, despite having a carbon fiber body, not particularly powerful, despite having a big V8, but it doesn't really make any kind of downside to the car. It's not about that. It's about the fact that you have to work at it. You have to work to get these shifts right. And when you get them right and you get back on the throttle, it does that. And it's it's just a smile on your face. Smile per mile factor, if you will. It's not quantifiable like a, an acceleration zero to 60 or a quarter mile time, but the smile to mile figure, if you could give it a figure like this, would be just absolutely stratospheric. That's the thing with these cars. That's what makes them so fun. And the community around them as well, and the people who are here and driving their cars today, just the icing on the cake. Every time it's so much fun, especially with the GT8 club outings when we get together with like 10 or 20 of these together. It's just ridiculous. Totally, totally absurd. So we'll get out of town, we'll go find some roads where we can do more of this. You genuinely won't believe this, but about 10 cars ahead of me in traffic, completely coincidentally, is a glacial blue V8 Vantage Roadster that's not mine. I can see it way up there in the traffic. Maybe it's only about five cars ahead. It just pulled out and joined us. There aren't that many of those, and there's one of them up in front of us that matches mine. I'm itching to try and get closer to that. 
Like, I would really like to see that car up close. It's probably a 4.3. Most of the Glacial Blue cars were 4.3s rather than the 4.7, the facelift, like mine. And there are a few giveaways, like the wheels and the number of slats on the grill and some small things like that. But, uh, uh, yeah, that's cool. That's completely random. I love moments like that. You're driving with four Astons and then another very nice Aston just joins you randomly. Why not, eh? There it goes, Navy roof. Oh, I can't see it, it's, it's gone, it's gone. Maybe we'll be able to catch up further down. For now, it's disappearing off into the distance. You'll just have to believe me. And then believe it or not, there's a 650S Spider. <laughs> and we're still with the Vantage up ahead. Oh, it's turned off now. Oh well, I'll never get to see it closely. It's those fun things, isn't it? I mean, the V8 Vantage Roadster is like a 40, 50,000 pound car. Yeah, completely gone that away. But I don't know, you're immediately drawn to things that match with what you have. Anyway, we'll continue this way. The Kia Sportage probably has no idea what's going on, stuck in an Aston convoy. That's a nice color on the Fiat 500s. I've always quite liked that blue. Clearly, blue cars, and I'm sold, right? It's easy. Um, but let's get out of this place. Well, we finally have a bit of dual carriageway, which means the cars can go by. I'm taking it easy, because I just want to enjoy some sounds. GT3 are taking it easy, taking it very, very easy. V600. Oh, yes! GT8. Oh, my days. And Speciale. What a cool set of sounds. <laughs> Love that, now I'm gonna be very cheeky and skip my way back through. Oh, when you drop it down a gear in here, it's just so good. Yes, we can go. <laughs> oh, what a cool day. What a cool day. All of the noise unleashed. Oh, this car is just stupid. It's so stupid, but it's so epically stupid. It's what you want a car to do. You're going 40 miles per hour and it sounds like that. Drop it down to first gear. I mean, come on, this is like automotive awesomeness. Oh, Dino, lovely, lovely, lovely. Under the bridge. Oh my days. We've pulled in for a moment, parked up the cars, and I am gonna take this for a little run. I have the keys borrowed from Zen Car Driver to go and experience the new V12 Vantage Roadster for myself. First time, of course, driving in one of these. So let me just take a seat inside. Obviously, brand new, which means running in. I mean, even at this point, we've got 21 miles on the odometer. But let's just start it up. All right, there we go. Need to reaccustom a little bit. Obviously, we've got the different driving settings. This is where you go Sport Plus. Turn it up into track and you get some lovely V12 sounds. But we'll take it for a short little run. Let's see what this is like. This is the V12 Vantage Roadster then. So let's head very carefully out of here because of course this is quite a low car. And there's a V600 and there's my GT8. But this is an area with some very nice roads and the perfect place if we don't have too many roadworks to experience something like this. And I tell you what, that initial sound in the cabin is really nice. I don't know how much of that you could hear, but it's a really, really cool sound. So in here, you start driving either with drive for auto, or if you pull a paddle manually, you'll be a manual on the eight-speed auto gearbox. A little bit of roadworks, but hopefully not for too long before we're in Sport Plus at the moment. So things are a little bit more lively straight away and drop it down manual second gear because who doesn't want to hear some of that engine sound obviously very conscious that this is a brand new car being run in so i can't absolutely boot it around tell you what though it feels nice and it looks phenomenal there's something about driving like a limited edition more track focused car that's open to the elements inside it feels pretty calm there's a bit of a deflector window back there between the buttresses behind my head just getting a little bit accustomed and familiar with it obviously first time 
driving a V12 Vantage new generation on video. My dad used to have an old gen V12 Vantage actually, one of the original 1300 or so manual cars that Aston Martin had made back in, was around 2010 that they were introduced before they then made the V12 Vantage S and made a lot more of them ultimately down the line. Although still not actually that many, still a pretty rare car. Obviously for this generation, there are, is it 350 coupes and 250 roadsters in total? As we've found some puddles, welcome to England. It's been raining a lot recently, so the roads are all very wet and greasy. That's a cool sound without even being full on the throttle. It's a really cool noise that this makes. Rides pretty well quite firm but not crazy and this is in the what setting are we in that was in the softest setting okay as soon as you turn it into sport plus and then track mode yeah then it gets really really firm i definitely want that back please in normal sport mode sport mode is the base mode sport plus on the gearbox obviously i'm in manual override on the paddles um i'd love to rev it all the way out but not with 20 miles on the odo there's a time and a place and it's not in a brand new car that still needs to be run in for a good few hundred miles. Inside, one of the things I've always felt about the Vantage is that there's an overload of buttons. There's so much gimmicky stuff in here, if I can say, and that's one of the things that deterred me from this new gen car in the first place. Just looking around, like, where is the button you want to press? The V12 badge at the center is quite nice. So we're now back into national speed limit. 4,000 RPM, that's all we're gonna get out of it right now. So that was one of the things inside. I love the squared off steering wheel, feels really nice. I think the car looks amazing. At first I thought it was, again, a bit like the inside, a bit gimmicky, but I've kind of grown to it. So like I say, I kind of passed on the opportunity for one of these. Could have done it, felt like it. Very expensive car, I felt perhaps too expensive for what it is. And I didn't really want to lose any of my older Astons. Obviously, I have recently sold the DBS, but I didn't want to sell the GT8 or my V8 Vantage Roadster and couldn't really justify three Vantages in the garage. You know what I mean on that front? This is weird. We've got wet roads and the sunshine out. And I forgot to bring my sunglasses. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, so I'd like a bit more noise out of this. I think one of the first things I would do would be an exhaust, to be honest, because it's very quiet. It's very, very quiet. But I actually can't thank Zencar Driver enough because I'm driving this on collection day. I think when I drove the GT4, it only had about 30 miles on the clock, and now I'm driving this with only 20 on the clock. That's newer even than some of my own new cars when I've driven them, which is actually quite funny to think about. I think you have to go into this, and this is something that everyone got wrong with the DBS as well, as a slightly more dynamic, but still comfy GT car, not a track car, not like a McLaren track car is, or like, well, many other brands, to be honest. It's not hardcore and uncomfortable and ridiculous. It's still pretty nice to drive. I pop it back into drive and just waft along, cruise along because that's where I think this kind of excels right now. This is cool to drive this on day one. Mixed emotions, I think it's a cool car in a way I'd have loved to have had one, but I'm not kicking and screaming and thinking like sometimes, ah, I wish I had done it. I'm not feeling like that right now. Obviously you need to drive it harder when it's fully run in and get the full experience. Parked back up after the drive then in this, the V12 Vantage Roadster. Having this car next to the V600 Coupe, my GT8 around the corner, the GT3 just behind you guys, plus the other GT8 in Speciale just departed by the way, and the sound as they set off was mega. But how cool to drive this literally on collection day with only 21 miles on the odometer to experience the V12 Vantage Roadster. And I tell you what, this is quite a different spec to what I would choose. As you guys know, I love my carbon fiber. I love big wings. I would have the optional wing on the back. You can also have this whole upper section of the bonnet of the hood in exposed carbon as well and all of the other accents. But I truly appreciate the elegance of this spec. The gloss black with those Q silver pinstripe details, even the silver that you have running up the A pillars on the windscreen surround as well. And this color, the Zaffa blue, truly suits it. It looks immense. In fact, these two cars together, both very different forms of V12 engined 
Aston Martin Vantage. Both very, very cool cars in Zencar Driver's collection. So a huge thanks to Zencar Driver. Do go and follow if you don't already over on Instagram. And of course, also to Guy and the team from HWM Aston Martin in Walton on Thames for setting up today, for hosting the day, and for making it possible to be part of it all as well. For now, for me, I'm gonna hop back in the GT8, head back onwards to the Schmuseum. I've enjoyed this drive, experiencing it. Of course, in a way, I'm very envious, I'm very jealous. It is a beautiful car that Zencar Driver now owns. I slightly feel I missed out by not doing it. But hey, there are lots of cars in this world that are amazing and it's not possible to buy them all. Not yet, at least. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thank you very much for your support. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.